Good morning, everyone. My name is Joni Whiting, J-O-N-I-W-H-I-T-I-N-G. I just need to put this here for one second. And I appreciate the opportunity to be here today so I can share my story, my family's story. More specifically here, I am here to tell you the story of my daughter, Stephanie, a hard worker, loving wife, and amazing mother of three. In June of 2000, Stephanie was diagnosed with melanoma skin cancer on her face, a mole that had developed during her third pregnancy. The next two years were filled with experimental therapies and endless surgeries as they cut her face off one inch at a time until there was nothing left to cut. The pain she was experiencing was unimaginable and the nausea was so severe that it became difficult for her to eat. That was when a doctor at the hospital pulled me aside and told me that Stephanie might benefit from using marijuana. At the time, we didn't consider it an acceptable option. I was strongly opposed to the use of marijuana and my home had always been drug free. Moreover, the consequences associated with marijuana's illegal status were frightening. After Stephanie's 10th surgery, I'm on the wrong page, excuse me. All efforts to save her life had failed, and her oncologist predicted that she had about six months to live. As her term was continued to grow, her whole body was racked with continuous and uncontrollable pain. No matter how much Oxycontin or Roxycodone she took, it part provided her little to no relief. Extreme nausea was resulting in dangerously rapid weight loss and anti-nausea medications including Marinol, a synthetic form of THC, one of the active chemicals in marijuana, simply did not work. At that point, my other adult children begged me to let Stephanie use marijuana. When I refused, they took her out of my home so that she could use it. When she came back three days later, she looked better than I had seen her in months. Whereas she'd been eating nothing for days, she was eating three meals a day then, using marijuana, and keeping the food down. And for reasons I don't know, marijuana also seemed to enhance the effects of her pain medication without making her feel high. When that doctor first di suggested Stephanie use medical marijuana, my fear of being caught was too significant to overcome. But once I saw how much relief it provided my suffering daughter, I was willing to risk everything, including going to jail. I would rather have spent the rest of my life in prison than deny her the medicine that helped her to live for 89 more days. I don't use drugs. I don't abuse alcohol. I'm a veteran. I'm a mother and I'm a great grandmother. I've raised four children and I'm now raising the, the children my daughter had to leave behind. As a lifelong volunteer, I have dedicated a large portion of my own life to helping people stay clean and drug free. But I saw with my own eyes that for medical purposes, marijuana works. People say, that there is no greater loss than when a parent loses their child. And they are right. I lost my mother three weeks after my daughter and my husband six months after my mother. Neither of them used marijuana because they didn't need it. At this point, nothing can be done for me and nothing can be done for my daughter. 
but there is something that can be done for those families across Minnesota that are currently dealing with similar situations. We need merely to open our eyes and see their pain, even if it isn't as obvious as in Stephanie's case. They deserve compassion, dignity, and honor. And that is what this bill will provide. I thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Concerns about uh, law enforcement and those types of things standing in the way. Is, is that frustrating uh, to you as a, as a parent? Very much so. And it makes me want to talk to them in person. It makes me want to show them the picture of my daughter and ask them, do they even have an, any idea what kind of pain we're talking about that helps the people that suffer from these diseases? They have no idea. My, my daughter wore her pain on her face, as you saw. But when you cover it up, nobody sees how bad it is. It's bad. I've, I've actually spoken to a number of law enforcement officers last, last time I testified was for the Justice Committee, and they had a lot of police officers there and a lot of um, like commissioner people, people that are in high places in law enforcement. And to my face, they all said, we wouldn't have arrested you, but they shouldn't have arrested anybody that's in my shoes or my daughter's shoes. What would you say to the governor if you had a chance to talk to him about his concerns about law enforcement? I say he's the governor and that he should lead. That's what I say. I say that it's his responsibility to lead and then it's law enforcement's responsibility to do what he says. And if I don't see any difference between my, my doctor or my daughter's doctor prescribing me cocaine through oxycodone, then cannabis, you know, that, that someone can use. If it helps them, it helps them. We had no idea. She got Marinol. My daughter got Marinol. It's THC. And it did absolutely nothing for my daughter. It was only from her smoking it that it released some chemical that helped her. And it, it did keep her alive for another 89 days. It helped her to be able to eat for 89 more days. Munchies, I don't know what you want to call it. <laughs> but it worked, and I stand before you to give you that testimony. It worked, and we should not be denying it to anybody. And if I could talk to the governor myself, I would be more than happy to. And any law enforcement officer, I would be happy to talk to them and try and help them figure out a way to make this legal for the people that need it. That's just where I'm at. Thank you, Thank you sir. Somebody told us that the